I've been talking to queen mothers and looking at the role they're playing in villages in West Africa. I would say in West Africa, I talk to queen mothers, and then around the rest of Africa, I look at their their origins. Like in the Nile Valley, you have the Candaces, and so we have a history, and then we have a contemporary phenomena. And when I first went to Ghana, I met people who didn't really think the queen mothers existed. So I wondered, and I began to go to the villages and ask about them more directly. And then I met with several um, university students, and they explained how they went primarily to Queen Mothers when they wanted to develop a project in the villages. Mm. They would go to the Queen Mothers. And that's how I first got started. Now I've been working with Queen Mothers for about, um, let's see, since 2010, seven years. Okay, great. So what do you think is important for uh, particularly African-American communities to uh, know about uh, the Queen Mothers? And, oh, well, just any American, really. So, you know, in the United States, there was a time in the 60s, like 19, around 65, when Daniel Patrick Moynihan came out with the, um, with the pathology, uh, the matriarchal pathology, theory where he argued that in the African American community women were holding inordinate power within the family or leadership in the family but the reality is that not only did we hold it here in the United States but we always held it and not only did we always hold it but it is a really really good thing for society so literally when we understand where we come from and why we do what we do we see that um, things people tell us are bad are in fact good. So I can say more, you know, about the Queen Mothers and why that's really important, why they're so important. Do you uh, think there are any examples of great Queen Mothers that we can point to in the United States? Yes. So we can begin with people like Harriet Tubman or um, Sojourner Truth, um, Queen Mother Moore, um, Fannie Lou Hamer, um, Ella Baker, all of them are playing a Queen Mother role because the key things that Queen Mothers do is to be a counterpart and a, and a um, complement to male leadership. And male leadership is complementary to the Queen Mother's leadership. So with the, queen, with the queenship in Africa, it was never either or. It wasn't that you only have a queen like a Queen Elizabeth and there's no king. Right, you would always have both. And what do you think can actually help people want to study Africa more, return to Africa? Or do you feel like people are already doing that? Um, we're at a really difficult turning point because society has moved to focus on the individual. And African culture is so much not about the individual. So it's a little difficult to um, make that orientation, but I find that if we bring some positive information about our African heritage to people, they, they, they grab right onto that, and that that's probably the way. You know, it's like you can catch more, catch, I don't want to say, catch more flies with honey than you can with um, uh, something bitter. So we, we, we have a shared history of a bitter past. We have to know it in order not to repeat it. But we, we want to really be careful to bring all the nice, positive things that we have together. I think that makes us want to know more.